Hi friends, welcome back. We are going to discuss the differences between MD and DO so that you can chart your right path for you as you're considering which path to take or to pursue both. This will be kind of like a nice refresher or introduction to the differences and nuances between both. I work with students every cycle who are shy or more reserved and have difficulty really kind of carrying out their message on the page, like Yasmin. So meet one of my former students. She had a tough time talking about her YDO, why medicine, and it was such a pleasure to work with her because her passion, her commitment was right there. It was just a matter of really fine tuning the message and her wording and her phrasing so she can boldly portray all the wonderful um, experiences and perspectives and takeaways that she that she shares as a unique candidate. And so we do that together. If you are applying and you wanna learn about how I work with students, make sure you grab your spot on my calendar and we can start chatting about how I work with students if you're a good fit and we go from there all right so here we go let's get started first things first let's start with the basics so both DOs doctors of osteopathic medicine and MDs doctors of medicine are fully licensed physicians in the United States they work side by side they can prescribe medication they can perform surgeries and practice in all 50 states However, their training and kind of philosophy have some kind of divergent qualities. MD focuses primarily on diagnosing and treating diseases using conventional medicine. MDs attend medical school that follow the model that focuses on human anatomy, pathology, clinical practices through a scientific evidence-based lens, right? And I'm not saying there are not overlaps. There are definitely overlaps. We're just talking about general kind of points of departure at times. So DOs, on the other hand, they train in all the same areas as MDs do, but they do have an added focus on osteopathic principles. This means that they take on holistic measures and approaches to medicine. They consider the whole person rather than just kind of specific symptoms. DOs also receive additional training in OMT, in osteopathic manipulative treatment. And these are kind of hands-on treatments to diagnose, treat, and even kind of at times prevent or curb injury. Both paths lead to a career as a licensed physician, but the journey and the philosophical approach can differ. So step two, let's talk um, numbers and statistics. As of 2024, there are 154 MD medical schools in the United States and about 38 DO schools. Just this past year, we had one or two open in Florida. Um, new ones. MDs have been historically more prevalent, but DOs are steadily increasing, right? So reflecting the growing population of osteopathic medicine. DO schools. According to the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine, so ACOM, there are about 38,000 students currently enrolled in DO programs. DO schools are spread out across the United States with new programs, like I said, opening in response to the growing demands of this particular practice philosophy but also physicians in general md schools enroll about ninety-three thousand in total with the long established presence across the country like we mentioned and so taking kind of stock of those numbers let's think about kind of step three which is residency and matching statistics because a few cycles ago now mds and do's enter the same residency match process it's a crucial consideration for both do and md students because you want to match and one day practice, right? So they go through the same national resident matching program. However, historically, DO students have faced some challenges matching to certain specialties that are more competitive than their, let's say, MD counterparts, right? So match rates, and I'll read this. According to the 2023 NRMP data, 91.6% of MD applicants matched into a residency program compared to 84.6% of DO applicants. While the gap has been narrowing, it's something to keep in mind as you decide which path to take and ideally which specialty the, to then take. Although it's tough, right? Because every time I talk to students, they change their specialty maybe one to three times during medical school. Very main specialties like family medicine, pediatrics. I have, at this point when I work with my math students, so my MS4s, I don't even worry, ask, but I don't even worry about whether or not they're MDs or DOs. But there are competitive specialties like emergency medicine, anesthesiology, orthopedic surgery, and where kind of MDs are still kind of doing a little bit better from a statistical standpoint. But I will say that gap is narrowing, right? That DOs are doing, are gaining kind of traction and doing better even in these competitive applications kind of specialties, but something to kind of take note. Of. Okay, so step four, how to consider DO and MD. Let's discuss why a student might choose to avoid 
either the DO or the MD route. So these are kind of just general tips, right? When not to consider DO. If you are absolutely certain that you want to pursue a highly competitive specialty, dermatology, neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, this is something you want to think about. I'm not saying don't do DO. I'm saying this is kind of something you want to talk to your mentors about and really kind of think about whether or not you should be leaning to the MD program. Also kind of depending on your MCAT score, right? So these have specialties have traditionally had higher percentages of MDs matching. So yes, while DOs will match, the competition is fiercer. So something to kind of think about as you're considering that path. And I have students who apply to both MD and DO and then weigh their options, right? When not to consider the, the MD. I have students probably every cycle who apply just DO. So if you are really passionate about holistic, integrative patient care, not to say that you wouldn't be a good fit for MD, MD but if you're interested in OMT, if you're interested in kind of that set of values and that approach to your practice as it is essentially part of your kind of DNA as a practicing physician, a DO path might be of interest to you. Primary care in underserved areas. If you're interested in DO to kind of work on, you know, how diet and exercise and how kind of social determinants of health impact uh, the lived experience. If you have a lower MCAT score and you kind of want to maximize your chances, a DO profile may be of interest for you. So again, not to say MD would not, but you want to kind of think about historically DO programs have allowed a slightly lower MCAT score. This is all kind of coming up and, and slightly changing, but you may find a better fit. You may find that you're maximizing your chances if you go the DO route. All right, so how do you stand out as a DO applicant? If you are leaning towards a DO um, application, let's talk about how you kind of tailor your messaging so that you really kind of show that this is not your backup plan, this is not a plan B, that you are highlighting your commitment to holistic care, that you're um, highlighting your commitment and interest to OMT. Admissions committees want to see that you are applying to them for their principles, for their kind of philosophy as osteopathic physicians, right? So you really want to show that yes, this is the path you are deliberately charting. Like I said, that is not your plan B. So do you demonstrate in your application that you are into holistic, into, that you um, are kind of like wanting to advance a holistic approach in clinical experiences, in your community services? Also shadow a DO. This is bonus tip, right? You'd be surprised how many students are like, yes, 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 I want to do DO. And then I look at their ex activity section and they haven't shadowed a DO yet. So you really want to kind of get in the room with DOs, have those conversations, be mentored by one, really kind of learn what it looks like, how how it slightly differs and how it's really in everything that you believe in. So really kind of want to show those glimpses in your application. So if you are at that point, right, where you're like, I'm going to apply this upcoming cycle. I don't know where to begin. I might be into MD, might be into MD and DO, but I start to think about writing and the blank page on the screen kind of like, you know, is screaming at me. Schedule your call. Let's talk and see if you're if we're a good fit because I take X amount of students every cycle and we really focus on the entire messaging aspect from personal statement to interview prep to really fine tune that messaging for both MD and DO. Make sure that you are finding your place. Yes, you are applying and it could be so draining and it could be kind of like, you know, self-deprecating a little bit like causing you to question your self-worth, but it's all about fit. It's all about how you fit to them, how they fit with you. If you are finding the right programs to, to apply to, then it should be that mindset and not just, oh, will they pick me? I hope this was helpful. I love to work with my DO students. It's just such a pleasure to think about how they kind of stitch together their application and their experiences in such meaningful ways. So like I said, I hope this was helpful. Give us a like, share with your pre-med friends, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.